So I know this video has been a long time coming because I finally completed or I'm just literally at the end of Final Fantasy 7 Remake and I'm someone who had no intention of playing this game because it just didn't really appeal to me but if you're someone who hasn't played Final Fantasy 7 Remake honestly you need to because you will not regret playing this game. <laughs> Okay, let's play Final Fantasy VII Remake. Hopefully, I can give it a chance. 24 hours later. There will be no spoilers in this video, but the game starts at 100 miles an hour. And sometimes that is a good thing because it gets you straight into the action and straight into the story. Get down here, Merc. The game is set in the dystopian cyberpunk world of Midgard and you obviously play as Cloud who is hired to join Avalanche, an eco-terrorist group to stop Shinra, the mega corporation, from using the planet's natural essence. Shinra uses Mako, a refined form of the planet's spiritual energy, harvested by massive reactors to power Midgar. So Barrett, who is a freaking badass by the way, believes excessive Mako harvesting harms the planet, so the first mission is you going to bomb one of the reactors. So how do we get to the bridge? above Mako storage. <sighs> Ain't holding out on me, are you? The game starts with an absolute bang, and this is where you meet some of the main characters in the game. Barrett, Biggs, Jesse. At the start, this is where I was hoping, please let me get used to this combat, because if I don't within the first couple of hours, I feel like I'm gonna just lose interest in this game. I put it on the hardest level, because I like to challenge myself, and early on, it gives you a little bit of a tutorial of your like basic attack, you have a block, but when pressing triangle, you can switch between operator and punisher mode, where if you have a lot of enemies around you, punisher mode deals a hell of a lot of damage. We can take it! Make it rain! It sacrifices movement, but it is essential to use when you are surrounded by enemies. Where I was first put off from the game was the fact of using the command list. It felt like I just didn't think I would like this sort of thing where I'm playing, I'm playing, and all of a sudden I've got some commands on the screen. I thought it would kind of disrupt the gameplay. But yeah, after a couple of hours of playing, I absolutely loved it. I loved it. You can switch through characters who are in your party in combat. And not only that, once you fill up your ATB gauge, this is where you can unleash incredible, powerful attacks from every member of your team. This is the best part of the game, the combat I love. I actually love it better than Final Fantasy 16. That was the first Final Fantasy game I played and I love that game. That was my best game of 2023. But I can't believe that I even prefer the way Final Fantasy 7 Remake is because I just love the fact that you can use these commands. It breaks up the gameplay. It has a bit more strategy to the game where you're just, you're slashing, it's quick pace and all of a sudden you have your command list for your different characters. You can switch them as well. And once you filled up that ATB game, if you're coming up against flipping hard bosses it just all comes together and it's just pure mayhem it's down rain hell on it now
That's right. One thing that was quite frustrating about the game that I didn't actually realize until I was doing this review is that when I'm coming up against these side bosses and massive bosses, I didn't actually know what they're weak to. It didn't actually tell me. The game didn't tell me. I was just like, why doesn't the game tell you? So you get materia in Final Fantasy VII and you can attach these to your characters and it may be ice attacks, fire attacks, revive where you can revive your teammates in battle. And one of the most important materials, which I didn't know until now, SS. It's kind of like my fault, but the game didn't really tell me that just kind of sorts out that problem and negative I had about the game now I need to go find that materia assess it will tell you what your enemies are weak to which is gonna be a massive help pretty stupid of me <laughs> seems you're not worth the money Mark. every last key Anyways, you can obtain this from Chadley as he will provide materia, summons, and also provide VR missions to complete. The summons I totally forgot that Cloud can have, and you can summon the one and only Efree to the battle scene, and my gosh, this helps a lot when you're struggling. Get him! I got there in the end in terms of the combat, so I urge you to be a little bit patient. If you're the same as me and was just it didn't really appeal to you, trust me, after a couple of hours, I do believe that you will love it. Even after the first boss, I still wasn't convinced whether I would carry on, but you need to carry on past the point because you start to meet more of the characters, you start to build much more of a connection with them, but then also the combat just gets more and more enjoyable, and the command system is the best bit. It's not just about button mashing. This one's for you! Very shut up and take my money. You have to give this game time, and if you're anything like me, I didn't have any tears in my eyes in regards to the story. I told you it would be worth it. Every last year. The characters are incredible. Obviously, Cloud starts off very quiet being an ex-soldier and he doesn't really open up to the team. He has a lot of flashbacks and tremors from his past and he starts to open up as the game goes along and I just love the character development with Cloud. He's such a badass, man. And I love his hair. Emotional! Barrett is such a massive hard guy, but really he is the most loving dad, especially with his daughter who is so damn cute and you see that other side to Barrett. You have Biggs, Wedge, Jesse, Aerith... And of course, Tifa. Now, if this was made in Western world... <laughs> You're telling me I couldn't be Tifa? This is much more realistic. The Western version. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. This is a natural. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that, guys. I had to do that because this video might get a very good score on the ESG score. I could be hired by Sweet Baby and get a real job. But the story gets better and better as I played more and more. There is so much emotion to this game. You have that connection with the characters. There's sadness. There's hope. There's excitement. And you just feel the world. You feel the characters. And oh my gosh, I've made a promise to myself I will not play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth until I've platinumed this game because this deserves to be platinumed. That's not to say there's not some negatives about the game. When I love a game, I love to do every side mission to a game if I love it that much. And with this, yeah, there was a few side missions where I was a bit like, it feels like a bit more of a waste of time. It kind of slowed the pace down quite a lot. And I was like, I can't really be bothered to do this, but I did it anyway. They were quite, they were fun anyway, because all I wanted to do was long out my journey in this game. I didn't want to rush it and I wanted to know more. You can help out the local kind of like town in a certain sector of the game. You have to help out some little kids and it is quite 
quite fun. You feel a bit more connected to the people and the environment when you are doing these side quests. Some people will probably find them boring or like filler, but again, I didn't mind it. I think one of them was hilarious, you know, where it's cloud where you have to dress up as a woman and have a dance off. <laughs> I found this quite funny to be fair. It was actually quite fun. I know people will be like, why am I doing this? But the best side mission for me <laughs> was the gym part where you have to do a pull up challenge and you have to memorize the combinations on your controller. And this was so much fun. This was so cool. I just love this bit, you know, be being a gym guy myself. Yeah, buddy. What was even hard, I just hurt my shoulder. What was even better is when you do the pull-up challenge with Tifa. This was super, super hard because there's three different people you can kind of challenge and you need all three in order to get a trophy. So I had to do it and it was so much fun. It was frustrating, but I was like, I've got to keep remembering the combinations or she's going to drop off. <laughs> The darts mini game as well, another trophy that I did because I had to get the best score. That was fun, my god. Some of them were felt a bit wasteful, but overall, you know me. I, like When I love a game, I love a game. I'll do every little bit. The map design was a little bit confusing, so I found it very hard to find certain side missions. And the one thing that frustrated me the most was when I completed a big side boss. And my life was literally at the end, so I would defeat this very, very hard side boss or a big boss. And you would have to find different park benches so you can recover. Problem is, is when I was in one of the underground ground levels I couldn't find the park bench and there was a number of enemies after that and I didn't want to waste the potions I had I was like trying to save them you need to stack up on potions by the way mega potions the, the revive one it was frustrating because I felt like after a big boss it should automatically heal you so you should have full health in order to get back I had to go through some other enemies and I kept dying so that was one thing that was frustrating I'm someone who doesn't really like the JRPG sort of games and have never really got into Final Fantasy apart from Final Fantasy 16 best game of 2023 and this is slowly becoming Becoming my best game of this year, even though this came out a few years ago. If I play Rebirth before the end of the year, imagine if another Final Fantasy takes the top spot. But I love the story, I love the characters, I love the different settings and the graphics and the art style to this game. Yeah, it's more linear, but with those side missions, it did feel like an open world game traveling to different locations. You can unlock fast travel after doing a certain side missions where you don't have to pay for it. I just loved everything about this game. Now, this is honestly becoming one of my favorite franchises to date. I feel like the Last of Us franchise is in a way ruined for me. I was such a big fan of the first one. The second one let me down on so many levels where I've just lost the love, anything to do with the Last of Us. And even Spider-Man, because Spider-Man 2, I just felt like the story was a bit of a downgrade from the first one. Certain choices they decided to make in the game, I felt like they played it very safe, not to mention modern day writing. Never met a strong female ass character, have you? So in a way, I'm not as hyped to kind of replay the game, but also for a sequel. But with Final Fantasy, obviously I'm looking forward to Ghost of Tsushima 2, one of my favorites. I love the God of War series and obviously like The Witcher. Final Fantasy 7 Remake, it's just made me even more excited to play Rebirth after I platinum it. And it is probably becoming my favorite franchise. I, yeah, I need to order some hoodies and stuff. I would probably give this game a 10. I know you're probably like, yes, too generous, but I'm just being honest. I loved everything about this game. Some of the NPCs repeat what they say and stuff like that. But again, when you love a game, those little things don't bother you. It's a fun game game and an engaging story with amazing characters you know which, hey listen that's what gaming's about isn't it and it's not made by the western world <laughs> i want to play rise of the ronin next and then obviously there's like stellar blade to get through and then obviously alone in the dark so i don't know when i'm going to be playing final fantasy 7 rebirth what do you think about this video and what do you think about final fantasy 7 remake have you played it will you play it i want to know what you think so drop your thoughts in the comments and let me know well let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video i counted my entire gaming collection shout out to george laugh life 
I have about 30 games. When I save enough money for a house, I want to have a bookshelf of games. Love a physical copy. Thanks for the comment, dude. And you're like me, you know, I'm just trying to save some money for this damn house we're trying to get this year. It's, I'm not going to lie, it's very hard. I might be spending a bit more on games, but you know, this is an investment. But I have to say, it's very hard. I can't wait to have that gaming room. And let me just say, I made one mistake in my previous video. Sifu, I didn't put it in the damn video because all my steelbook editions are down below. And for some reason, because most of those still books or all of them have the normal box to it, but Sifu doesn't. I kept it at the bottom. So really, at the time I had 101, it would have been 102. But one of you pointed it out and I'm not sure how you did that, but you did. And then I realized, my gosh, it's not even on the flipping list because, you know, it's me. Stupid. But anyways, Final Fantasy VII Remake, you need to play it. Ah, trying to look like Tifa. <laughs> Who the hell is Tifa? It was at this moment that he knew.